Okay, the next molecule I wanna draw is PCL5. So I'll pick my central atom, that'll be phosphorus, because there's only one, and then I'll go ahead and attach my outer atoms here, all chlorines, and then I'll distribute my valence electrons. So phosphorus contributes five valence electrons because it's in group 5A. Chlorine, each of these will contribute seven valence electrons because they're in group 7A, and there are five of them. So seven times five, chlorine contributes 35 total, plus the five from the phosphorus. So we have 40 electrons here to work with. That's quite a lot. But we've kind of already used a lot with these bonds. So two, four, six, eight, 10. So we really only have 30 left to work with. So let's start satisfying the uh, valences of these outer atoms. They all need six electrons total in the form of lone pairs to satisfy their octets. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so let's see how many that used. So we had 30 to use for the lone pairs. So six plus six plus six plus six, so six times five chlorines, we just used 30 electrons, so we're out of electrons. So let's check everything's octet. Well, we know the chlorines are all good, they all have eight, but the phosphorus, this is an interesting case because the phosphorus actually has too much. It's got two, four, six, eight, ten. Usually things only want eight. But there's another exception to the octet rule in that elements in period three and higher can have expanded octets. So phosphorus is in period three and higher. So remember the periods are kind of the rows of the periodic table. Phosphorus is in row three, so it can have an expanded octet. So we have a completed Lewis dot structure. Let's count up our regions of electron density. We have one, two, three, four, five regions of electron density, and they're all bonded regions. So that's this row right here, five total regions of electron density, all bonded regions. That means the electron geometry is trigonal bipyramidal, and the molecular geometry, or the actual shape, is trigonal bipyramidal as well. So let me show you a shape, what this looks like. So in reality, the phosphorus is gonna be that red circle in the middle, and the chlorines are all gonna be the green circles. So it sort of looks like trigonal planar with a stick through it, right? Let me show you what I mean. So let me show you trigonal planar. So here's trigonal planar. Doesn't this kind of look like trigonal planar with a stick right through the middle? You can kind of think about the trigonal planar as like going through the board here, and then there's a stick through it. So this means that these angles between the triangle part are gonna be 120, but this angle right here is gonna be 90. So this is the shape that maximizes the distance between all of these bonds. Remember, they don't wanna be around each other. So I hope that one made sense. Okay, the next molecule I wanna draw is SF4. So I'll pick my central atom, sulfur in the middle, and then attach my fluorines. And then I've gotta distribute my valence electrons, so I'll see how many I have. Well, I'm gonna have six from the sulfur, and then seven from each of the fluorines, but I have four of them. So this will be 6 plus 28, or 34 electrons total to work with. I've already used up 2, 4, 6, 8, so that means I have 26 left. So I'll start filling up the octets of the outer atoms. They all need 6. So I just used six times four, 24 for the lone pairs. So I actually have two left, right? And the only place to put those is on the central atom, on the sulfur. So now everything uh, should have a satisfied octet. We already checked the fluorines, they're all good. But the sulfur, it's got two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. It's got too many, right? But again, Elements in period three and higher may have expanded octets. Sulfur is one of those examples. So don't worry, it's an exception. So we've got one, two, three, four, five regions of electron density, one lone pair, and four bonded regions. So where is that on the chart? Well, we've got five regions of electron density here, four bonded regions, and one lone pair. So this is where we are. So the electron geometry is trigonal bipyramidal, while the molecular geometry, or its actual shape, is seesaw. 
So let me show you what this looks like. So the electron geometry, this is kind of how it started out. There were five regions of electron density. And then what we did is imagine we just chopped off this bond right here and turned it into a lone pair. Now we have this, right? And it sort of looks like a seesaw if you flip it up this way. So kind of funny, but this lone pair now is gonna be pushing down on those bond angles, making them less than 120 degrees and less than 90 degrees that they were before. Okay, now I wanna draw ClF3. So here will be my central atom. I only have one chlorine. I'll attach my fluorines. And then how many valence electrons do I have to work with? Well, chlorine is in group 7A, so it'll contribute seven electrons. Fluorine is also in group A, so it'll contribute seven electrons, but there are three of them. So seven plus seven times three, this is gonna be 28 electrons to work with total. I've already used two, four, and six for these bonds, so that means I've got 22 left. So let's start filling up the valences of these outer electrons, I'm sorry, these outer atoms. Okay, so we just used six on each fluorine to fill their octets. So six plus six plus six, we used 18 in the lone pairs, plus, and then 20, 22, 24. So we've used 24 total. Uh, so does chlorine have a satisfied octet? We already checked the fluorines. Two, four, six. Nope, it only has six and it wants eight, right? So what we can do is put some more electrons on the chlorine. But we've actually only used 26 electrons now, right? Six, six, and six makes 18. 20, 22, 24, 25, 26. We have two more electrons to use and the only place that they can go is also on this chlorine. And now chlorine has two, uh, sorry, two from this bond, two from this bond, two from this bond. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is an example of an expanded octet, an exception to the octet rule because chlorine is in period three or higher. So we have one, two, three, four, five regions of electron density. Three of them are bonded regions and two of them are lone pair regions. So let's find this on the table. So we've got five regions of electron density total, three of them are bonded regions, and two of them are lone pairs. So the electron geometry was trigonal bipyramidal, but now its molecular shape is what we call T-shaped. So let me show you what happened here. So we kind of started out with our electron geometry of trigonal bipyramidal, and imagine we chopped off these two bonds right here. So those two fluorines that used to be there, uh, well, really, they weren't there ever, but imagine we took these away. Now the molecule is T-shaped, right? Kind of looks like a T if you look at it like that. But the idea is that we took away two bonded regions and replaced them with two lone pairs. So this molecule's actual shape is T-shaped. And again, the uh, bond angles are gonna be squished even more. So the bond angles are less than 90 degrees, even more so than the seesaw shaped and the hybridization is still for all trigonal bipyramidal electron geometries, sp3d. All right, the next one we're gonna draw is xenon difluoride. So my central atom is gonna be the xenon because there's only one. Then I'm gonna attach my outer atoms to draw my skeleton structure. And then let's see how many valence electrons we have to work with. So xenon contributes eight, fluorine contributes seven each, so eight plus seven plus seven, it's gonna be eight plus 14 or 22 electrons total. We've already used four, two for this bond, two for this bond. So let's start satisfying the valence shells of these outer atoms. Remember fluorine wants eight as most atoms do to satisfy its octet rule. So now they've both got eight total. So how many electrons have we used now? Let's, let's do a count. So we use six here, six here, and then four here, so 12 plus four, so that's 16. We still have a lot of electrons here. So we have 16 that we've used, but 22 available. So that means we can still use six more electrons. The only place we can really put them though is on the xenon. So let's start placing them here. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
So now Xenon pretty clearly has an expanded octet, right? Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But again, elements in period three and higher may have expanded octets, so we're good. We used our 22 electrons and our Lewis dot structure is completed. So we have one, two, three, four, five regions of electron density around the central atom, two of them are bonded regions, and three are lone pair regions. So we're in this row on the chart. Five total regions of electron density, two are bonds, three are lone pairs. So the electron geometry is trigonal bipyramidal, while its molecular geometry, or its actual shape, is linear. So what happened here? We started out with our electron geometry of trigonal bipyramidal, and then we took away three of these bonds. So imagine we took away this bond, this bond, and this bond. What would we be left with? Now we're just left with a linear molecule with three lone pairs surrounding the xenon and just those two fluorines sticking out either end. So we're back to linear. That's its actual shape. So I hope that one made sense. Even though we can have a very complicated looking molecule, it can be the same shape as just a linear you know, beryllium fluoride, BEF2. So please, uh, okay, moving on to SF6. So I'll pick my central atom as the sulfur. There's only one. And then I'll start attaching my outer atoms to draw my skeleton structure. Okay, so now let's see how many valence electrons do we have to work with. So, so uh, sulfur comes from group 6A, so it's gonna contribute six electrons. Fluorine is in group 7A, so it'll contribute seven electrons for each one, and there are six of them. So 42 plus six, we have 48 electrons to work with total here. So we've already used up for six bonds, that's 12 electrons. So really we only have 36 now. So let's start satisfying the octets of these fluorines. So we'll put six on each one, because they all already have two. So that'll make eight for each one. Okay, so we just used six for six fluorine, so that's 36. So that's all we had left, right? So 36 on the outer atoms, 38, 40, 42, 44, 46, 48. So we used all our electrons, so everything better be happy. Uh, the fluorines we know are all happy. The sulfur though, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, well that's a pretty expanded octet, but luckily it's an exception, it's in period three or higher, uh, sulfur is, so it can have an expanded octet. So this is a completed Lewis dot structure, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six regions of electron density, all bonded regions, so we're right here. This is an octahedral shape, with an octahedral electron geometry. All the bond angles are 90 degrees and the hybridization of the sulfur is sp3d2. So this actually looks like this. This is how you maximize the distance between all of these bonds in 3D space. So the red circle is the sulfur and the fluorines are all of the green circles. So this is what an octahedral molecule looks like. Okay, next up is BRF5. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick my central atom. That'll be the bromine, because there's only one. I'll attach my outer atoms here. Okay, so let's figure out how many valence electrons do we have to work with. So bromine is in group seven, so it'll contribute seven electrons. Fluorine is also in group seven, so it'll contribute seven electrons times five of them. So 35 from the uh, fluorine plus seven from the bromine. This will give us 42 electrons total to work with. Well, we've already used, for these five bonds, we've used 10. So now we have 32 left to work with. So let's start satisfying the octets of these outer fluorine atoms. Okay, so we use six on each one. So six times five is 30. So we still have two left, right? We had 32 after drawing these bonds, and the only place left that these could fit is on the bromine. So now we've got all of our fluorine satisfied. 
And then we actually have an expanded octet on the bromine here. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 11, 12. But again, it's an exception. It's in period three or higher. So we've used 42 electrons and this is our uh, completed Lewis dot structure. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six regions of electron density, five of which are bonded regions and one of which is a lone pair region. So we're in this row. So the electron geometry is octahedral. However, now the molecular geometry or its actual shape is square pyramidal. The angle was squished down a little bit by this lone pair and this hybridization has remained unchanged. So let's see what happened here. So we started out with our electron geometry looking like this, and then we removed one of these bonds and made it into a lone pair. So now it looks like this. If you can imagine, we just took away this uh, bond here and turned it into a lone pair. So now it kind of looks like a square pyramid, right? Where if that's the base, it's like a square pyramid. So that's where it gets its name. And remember that lone pair is gonna be squishing down on those bond angles, making them less than 90 degrees. Okay, so the last shape we're gonna do is xenon tetrafluoride. So again, I'll pick my central atom, the xenon, there's only one, and then I'll draw in my outer atoms to make my skeleton structure. And let's look at our valence electron situation. So we've got eight electrons from the val uh, valence of xenon. It's a noble gas, so it's got eight electrons in its outer shell. Fluorine, these are gonna contribute seven each because it's in group 7A. So eight plus 28. We have 36 electrons here to work with. However, we've already used two, four, six, eight for these bonds. So we really only have 28 left. So as we usually do, we'll start filling the valence shells of these outer fluorine atoms to satisfy their octets. Okay. All right, perfect. So we use six electrons on each of the fluorines. And so that was six times four is 24. But how many did we have left after these bonds? We said we had 28 left, right? So we only used 24 for the lone pairs. So now we still have two lone pairs that we can put on the central atom. And that's really the only place they can go. And again, this is an expanded octet, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. But again, xenon period three and higher, so it has an exception there. So this is a satisfied uh, structure. We've got a complete Lewis dot structure. And now we have four bonded regions and two lone pair regions of electron density. So six regions of electron density total, four of them are bonded regions, two of them are lone pair regions. So the electron geometry started out octahedral, and then we took away two bonds, made them into lone pairs, so now it's square planar. So think about if we just took away these two bonds out here. Now we simply have a square plane uh, type shape in three dimensional space, and this maximizes the distance between all of the bonds. And notice now, the, it's interesting, the bond angle is actually back at 90 degrees. However, the hybridization remains sp3d2. Okay, so that concludes all the shapes that you have to know for Vesper theory. So I hope that helped you guys out. Please contact me with any questions and I'll see you in the next video.